to whether or not you'd want to play at a local tournament. Obzon's a great deck right now. Jeskai might just be a great deck, period. Yeah, that's that's how I feel. Can't say I disagree, but we are underway. Jerry starts out on Temple of Malady. Matthew on two mulligans, Jerry on one, so they'll have the same number of cards this game. As Matthew is on the draw. And we're going to look at what Matthew's five was. Jerry will fire off a Thought Seize on turn two. And this is the one Thought Seize in Jerry's main deck, two in the sideboard. See a second land here for Matthew, but only a second land. It's a forest. He does have a Thought Seize of his own, along to go with a pair of Corsair of Krufix. So cards that will really help him recover from a mulligan. That last card on the bottom is an Ajani Mentor of Heroes. That guy's a long ways off. It's a tough thought season here for Jerry because I think if there was only one Corsair in the hand, that would probably be a pretty straightforward card to take here. Instead, he can't cut Matthew off of Corsair altogether unless he has a removal spell, which I suppose he does. So he's going to go down that, that path instead. Yeah, he takes the Corsair. A lot of it depends on whether or not Jerry wants to be thought seized back by leaving the thought seize here in Matthew's hand. That's almost certainly what's going to happen. Yep. That's another point of differentiation with these decks. Matthew with a full four copies of Thoughtseize in the main deck. And Thoughtseize back from Matthew. He drew a murderous cut for the turn. We're going to have Soul of Innistrad, Hero's Downfall, Doomwake Giant. Jerry does have land three, but he does not have Corsair of Crufix. And you can see why Jerry didn't care about getting Thoughtseize with his hand. His, his hand's not very good. Not yeah. a, he has an uncastable Hero's Downfall because of colored mana, and then he has a five drop and a six drop in his hand. Yeah, at that point, he just need, wants to get rid of a, cor a Corsair of Krufix. If Matthew draws that third land and lands a Corsair, it could do a lot of damage. For sure, because Jerry's not going to be going anywhere for a little while. And for Matthew, he had an interesting decision. If he takes Hero's Downfall, that's got a high upside. If he draws that land, now he can have this unchecked Corsair. However, if Matthew bricks on lands for a while here, he'll maybe have wished that he took some sort of five drop. Yep. And funny enough, Jerry ripped a removal spell here and a murderous cut for the Corsair, but I think Matthew ripped right back with another Thought Seize. Yeah, Matthew doesn't hit land three, but he does hit Thought Seize number two. He'll Thought Seize Jerry, go down to 16, seize the same hand, now with murderous cut added. Wouldn't be surprised he went with a removal spell last time. You think he does it again? I think so. It's not like this hand's gotten any better. <laughs> yeah, it's, that, the Soul of Innistrad's still a long ways off. The Hero's Downfall wasn't even castable in the last hand. And you're absolutely right. He takes Murderous Cut, but no land three from Matthew. Jerry has land four, one more, and then he's at Doomwake Giant. And Matthew does hit the third land. That's a Plains. All three of his colors are online. He'll have Corsair of Crufix. And now the pressure is on Mr. Thompson. Yeah, and Jerry really needs to find either a removal spell right now or running lands to start deploying some of his threats. Well, land number one does happen. He's going to crack a fetch land, cast a Doomwake Giant. The tri Constellation Trigger not doing much, but it is a 4-6. That will put some pressure on Matthew. He does not have a kill spell for it. And a third Thought Seize may not be exactly what he was looking for. Well, if Jerry misses a land drop next turn, it could be really good for Matthew. Yeah, a Resolved Soul of Innistrad actually is a lot of problems for Matthew if Jerry gets to cast it. Though another, another thing to keep in mind... Matthew with four main deck copies of Obzon Charm, so he does have some outs to just random big creatures that sneak through. Yeah, he will cut down the Doomwake Giant, swing in with Corsair of Crufix. And yeah, this is important here. Can Jerry get this Soul of Innistrad into play? He's got one turn to do it. And... Passing back over to Jerry. Five tools are 17 and 15. Jerry hits land six here. Really, really important. Big draw for Jerry Thompson. He's going to get sold in a strat and play. It's a 6-6 six, six death toucher. If he gets untapped with it, he'll start to buy back his own creatures from the graveyard. And also that means that the thought sees that Matthew is drawing this turn is a dead draw. And Jerry with no cards in hand. Matthew on top does get to spy a hero's downfall, but it's going to be a little late here. Jerry will get a swing in, and I think more importantly, we'll get his Doomwake Giant back. Exactly. Jerry's going to be able to get some card advantage of his own going here, and Matthew's going to have to keep his mana busy for the next couple turns, handling Jerry's board. If Matthew finds another black mana, he, he this does turn on his thought sees in a way. Except, well, that's at instant speed, so Jerry probably won't do it until Matthew's end step. It all depends on how things sequence here. Yeah. 
And this courser's not being very cooperative for Matthew either, which is a big problem. I don't think he's found a free card yet. Yeah, if he had a Swamp there, he could downfall the Soul of Innistrad. And then when Jerry used the ability, he could thought seize away the Doomwake Giant. But things just aren't going to line up that way. Yep. Swing here for Matthew. Jerry on end step is going to get the Doomwake Giant back into his hand. Matthew holding that hero's downfall. Jerry with just two more lands. And the swing from Soul of Innistrad. No choice here but to hero's downfall it for Matthew Alsbach. Again, not surprising. Not a lot else for Matthew to do. Jerry will make another Doomwake Giant, a blocker on the board for him. So back to Matthew. Finally, Corsair coughs up a land for him. It's a basic forest. And he's got a Fleece Mane Lion waiting on top. His draw for the turn was a Sylvan Carry added, though he also has Thoughtseize and Ajani Mentor of Heroes in hand. An option he has with the Ajani here is to just put some counters on the Corsair Crufix and hope that it gets through the next turn. At that point, the Corsair can block the Doomway Giant and protect Ajani, and then Matthew can start plussing it looking for more action. I suppose if he knows Jerry's hand is out of real cards, he can actually just plus it and start beating Jerry up with it. At three counters a turn, that's not an unreal, unreasonable clock. Also an option. And he's going to thought seize here. Seize two lands from Jerry. A costly thought seize. He had the option between thought seize carry added or a Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Chose to go with the thought seize carry added, which means he'll drop to an uncomfortable five life, most likely. Yeah, it makes it very problematic if Jerry finds a threat card this turn, which... I believe he did not. I think it was another land. Yeah, he found Sandstep Citadel. But Doomwake Giant will get to attack in for four. And one thing, remember, this is not a, a complete mirror match. There's always the chance that Jerry just draws something like Whip of Erebos and runs away with the game. Mm -hmm. Matthew, however, at the ready with an answer. That top card of his deck is an utter end. And the other end is a good enough of a draw here that I don't think Matthew should plus the Ajani looking for cards in any event. I still like putting counters on the Corsair for the same reason that I liked it last turn. And it means that he gets to guarantee a draw of utter end next turn, which is excellent in this spot. Yeah, he's going to go with the Ajani. We'll see which mode he wants. He's going to plus it, and you're absolutely right. Three counters on Corsair of Kruvix. When your opponent has two lands in hand, well, one that you know of, I suppose, but has nothing else going on on his board. That utter end is just such a great top deck. And you see Jerry here drawing Whip of Erebos. You know that utter end waiting is just so important right here. Yeah, Matthew's at five, which means just a big hit here is really problematic. It means he has a chump block with the courser on the soul of Innistrad if Jerry gets it back, and he falls to one. What I want to think that Jerry's contemplating here is he could play Whip, gain four, and then his Whip will almost certainly get utter ended. Or he can try to induce Matthew into utter ending the Doomwake Giant and then have Whip just in play. I guess he does have eight mana. He can play Whip and Whip back Soul of Innistrad all in one turn. Yep. He has to take some points of damage to do this. He's all on a bunch of Land of War Wastes, so this will cause him to fall to three. Yeah, it's a play set of Land of War Wastes. I think he's, yeah. Four, all four Land of War Ways in one temple. So he has to take some damage setting this up, but it's a lot of damage and it forces a chump block. Swing 410 here, see where it's going. If it goes, imagine if it goes at Matthew, that will force him into chump blocking and dropping to one. That is what happens. Matthew goes down to one. Jerry gains 10, goes up to 12. That utter end is just such a huge draw for Matthew. Yeah, it's perfect. I suppose even if he didn't have the utter end, Matthew might be able to weather through this Whip of Erebos for a while. So this is, this is now the squeeze that Matthew's in. The most obvious play is just get rid of the Doomwake Giant because Jerry has no other creatures in the graveyard. The other side of that, though, is that if Jerry finds a way to mill himself over, the Whip of Erebos can get a flyer out of the graveyard, say a Hornet Queen or something, and then Matthew can just die. So even though the safest, most straightforward route is to just take care of the Doomway Giant, or the Whip of Erebos yeah. is still threatening. And you see the draw here for Jerry is humongous. It is a copy of Hornet Queen. And this is the, uh, everything in this game, besides the Bulg in the five, 
has gone really well for Matthew. He's been ahead for almost the whole game, and now it's all undone. Right. And I don't think he can catch up. Hornet Queen's going to be great at doing that. And he has Jerry down to one, and you just have to think, oh, is there a way for him to sneak it across? But Hornet Queen does a great job of stopping attacks. Yep. Uh, it's the problem with the matchup here, at least game one. Matthew could always find a Siege Rhino with that Johnny. If he can do that, that'll get the game for him. Well, not after that big lifelink hit. Now the life totals are completely swapped. Uh, Matthew's looking at dead next turn just to the Hornets coming across. Right, well, the, the utter end was used on whips. So Jerry, yeah, I guess you're right. Jerry's still at 12. A plus from a Johnny. Does find a copy of Siege Rhino. But Siege Rhino's no help here. I mean, Jerry's got six in the air. And you can see why people went to this card to try to get an edge in Abzan mirror matches. Yeah. Matthew was doing his thing. Looked like he was on the verge of winning that one. And it, then a Hornet Queen undid everything. Yeah, it wasn't just the Hornet Queen. It was the fact that Jerry had that life gain off of the whip of Erebos that got it for him. If he doesn't gain the 10 that turn, the Siege Rhino there wins the game for Matthew. Yeah, it's, it's all bits of interlocking pieces there. Uh, but Hornet Queen was definitely the nail in the coffin. All right. So while those players go to sideboard, we're going to bring you back into the booth here. We have some trivia and premium giveaways this morning, something we do during all of our top eights here. Uh, the rules are we'll ask you a trivia question if you believe you know the answer. Hop onto Twitter. Make sure you are following us at SCG Live and put the hashtag SCG Premium. You see it on the bottom of your screen on your tweet. At the end of all of our top eight matches, one of the correct answers will be chosen to receive three months of Star City Games Premium for our first question. And I'm going to throw out a question for the first round here because I really like this deck that Jerry has brought. We saw Cedric Phillips play it yesterday. And there's while this, these lists for these Obzon Reanimator decks, there's been a lot of variety in them. And one of the things I like about Jerry's list, the list that Cedric played, was they're playing one of the M15 Soul cards. This was a whole cycle. There were six of them in total. Um, but which Soul, it's a Mythic Rare, is a one of in Jerry's deck? you believe you know the answer, make sure you tweet that at us before the end of the round. And it made a cameo appearance there in game one. It so did. we got a little bit of a clue if you've been watching. So going to the match, though, sideboard, this is going to be important here. Um, game one, there aren't too many answers that Matthew has to something like Whip of Erebos. He does have some copies of things like Erase, however, in the sideboard. Walk through how Matthew boards this matchup. Well, he's got a lot of really good options here. A race, Unravel of the Aether, and Fenza, and two copies of Doom Blast, and the Bile Blights, honestly, are another good answer to, or at least reasonable answer to Hornet Queen. I think that all of these cards could be coming in in some mixture. The Erase and the Unravel of the Aether giving him some more game against Whip of Erebos. Also could be used against Doomway Giant and Corsair Crufix. There's other targets in Jerry's deck in case he doesn't draw Whip. But two copies of Dune Blast, if the game goes on for a really long time, that's a very powerful card to have access to. I think the two Nissas may come in as well. I mean, I think Matthew has to be the aggressor here. It's not the easiest card for Jerry to get off the table. Uh, so a lot of really good sideboarding options here for Matthew. Yeah, I do. I, I agree there. I like that he has cards like Unravel the Aether that could take care of Sylvan Carry added and Whip of Erebos. And you're right, Dune Blast, as we saw in Ari Lax's Pro Tour deck, has been great in these Abzan mirrors. Now, there still are some difficulties. If Jerry has a Whip of Erebos going, all of this is undone if Matthew doesn't answer it. So he does have to be careful. It still is a tough matchup for him, but he has a lot more game in these games, two and maybe three. For sure. He can play a longer game, and he can interact more comfortably with Whip of Erebos, which are the two biggest weaknesses he has in the pre-board games. On Jerry's side, you see a Reclamation Sage, two Abzan Charms, an Erase, and Under End, a Farika, two Nisses, three Drown Sorrows, two Glare of Heresies, and two Thought Seizes. I really like the Glare of Heresies in this matchup. They're good removal against a variety of Matthew's threats, including the Anafenzas that he's bringing in here that could be problematic sure. for Jerry. I like the one Farika. I like the one Utter End. I like the two copies of Abzan Charm as well. Yeah. Um it does seem like Jerry Cyborg's a little bit lighter for this matchup, and that may be because he feels advantaged in the main deck, and I think rightfully so. Well, he's light on the sideboard because he's got a bunch of Hornet Queens in his main deck, so he's basically pre-boarded for game one. Yeah. Matthew's definitely catching up here. He's got a lot more juice in the sideboard than Jerry does, but as we saw, game one, Matthew's had a pretty big deficit, mostly because of the Hornet Queens, and then secondarily, the Whip of Erebos. How do you feel about cards like Thought Seize? We see Jerry with two copies on the sideboard, one in the main. Matthew had more of them in the main. In these mid-range mirrors, that seems to be a reasonable card, but do you want to board them in? 
Well, I like the thought seizes in Matthew's deck because Jerry's deck is more about moving parts. So his hands are going to be more vulnerable to thought seize because they're often going to be glued together by a particular card. Either a commune that lets him get his graveyard going or the one whip of Erebos. Also because Matthew's the aggressor in the matchup by sort of like him being as disruptive as possible. On Jerry's side, there aren't really specific cards that he's worried about in Matthew's deck. There's nothing he's trying to pinpoint in the same way that Matthew's going after Hornet Queens and Whip of Erebos. And Jerry's life total is also at a premium because he's the defensive deck in the matchup. The, the two points of damage are more likely to matter on Jerry's side than on Matthew's side. Jerry still may bring it in, but I think that there's nothing in particular he's going after. His life total matters. And these obs on mirror matches, these mid-range reanimator matchups, people do get empty-handed at some point. They're just playing off the top of their decks, and Thought Seizes are pretty bad draws. So I think the burden of proof is for you to want to Thought Seize in the matchup because uh, there's times where drawing one's really bad. We did see Matthew fire off a Thought Seize against a hand with just lands in it last round. So that you're right, they can become blank. And I think I agree. If, you know, you, if you're Jerry, you don't want to Thought Seize a hand that's just a Siege Rhino and a couple Planeswalkers. Sure, you get one of them, Matthew will just cast the other one. Exactly. So... I I could see, I, if I'm in Matthew's spot, I'm probably leaving in the full four. If I'm in Jerry's spot, I think that I keep the one main deck one in. I would be surprised if I would go past that. Matthew starts the game on the play with the Temple. Had a bit of a, a think there. His top card was Dune Blast, a great card in the matchup, but it's a seven drop. How much do you really want it on turn one? After contemplating, decides to ship it. And one of the saving graces here is that Matthew does have a windswept teeth in his hand. So that Dune Blast is not gone forever. He does get to shuffle it back into his deck, and that might actually be the tipping point between keeping it and putting it on the bottom. It's not gone forever. Second Temple here for Matthew. Both players just setting up. And we're going to see Jerry with his first spell. That's going to be a Thought Seize. So we'll look at Matthew's hand. He has two Windswept Heaths, a Drown in Sorrow, a Siege Rhino, among different targets here. And the Drown Sorrow, I'm sure the Drown Sorrow here is a, a way to try to fight Hornet Queen, which I, I can respect on Matthew's side, but I do think that he has to be cautious about signing into too reactive of a deck, because I think if the game drags out here, Jerry has an enormous advantage. Yeah, remaining cards in Matthew's hand were a Wingmate Rock and an Elspeth. So he has late game and some lands to build up toward it. And we'll get a look in a second here at Jerry's hand to Matthew drawing a thought sees of his own. Some updates from the field as we wait here. Uh, Glenn Jones, he's up a game over Robert Hunsaker, trying to avenge that loss in the Swiss. Brad Nelson up a game on Kelly King. So Brad with tokens, and both those players are Jeskai tokens. Uh, no, sorry, Glenn's on reanimator, Brad's on Jeskai. They're up a game. Ross Merriam with tokens, though, is down a game to Sheldon Frierkson. So he's going to have a bit of an uphill climb into the top four. Yep. But we have seen that game, that deck ye yesterday. Brad Nelson down a game in a challenging matchup against Mardu and was able to pull out the post-board games. And Matthew with the thoughts he's on Jerry. sees a hand full of different threats, but no land. Jerry has a commune with the gods here, which he's going to get to look at some cards for. But Jerry doesn't have land number two. Matthew thought he's away a whip of Erebos. Jerry had course. He kept, looks like he kept a two land hand with double green and a course of Krufix, and he's going to miss yep. on that third land. 24 lands, it appears like, in Jerry's deck, alongside the carry added. Yeah, he did use that turn to cast Commune with the Gods and found another Whip of Erebos. You see Jerry's hand flush once he gets another land here. Has Siege Rhino, Hornet Queen. Drop the turn was Glare of Heresy. He'll cast another Commune with the Gods. This time he has a choice between a second Courser and a Doomwake Giant. I still think he wants to err on the side of just taking the cheap stuff here while he's stuck on lands. Yeah, if he plays a Courser and Matthew kills it, he wants to just respond with another Courser. Yeah. And at this stage, I'd rather have a Doomwake, I believe, in the graveyard than in my hand. And it's a really good ups on Jerry that he thought sees away that Siege Rhino, not only to take away Matthew's play for last turn, but it's going to stop that Wingmate Rock from getting its raid trigger and making a second one if Matthew chooses to play it on five. It does save Jerry quite a bit of damage here. Matthew's sensing some weakness here when he sees Jerry pass the turn. He'll end step use that Obzon charm. 
Looks like to, to draw two. It's going to crack a fetch land first, which does shuffle the Dune Blast on the bottom of his deck back into the deck. Maybe he can draw it off Obzon Charm. Yeah, I like the timing of this because at this stage, you know, uh, a Dune Blast is not the best draw on Matthew's side because he's still missing some land drops, but the game is taking a slow enough pace that uh, I, I wouldn't mind drawing a Dune Blast here. Sylvan Carry added, and it looks like Temple of Plenty are the draws. Or Caves of Koilos, rather. So he does hit his fifth land. That's what he needed. Land five. He's got some options. See Wingmate Rock at the front of his hand. Wingmate Rock, Drown in Sorrow, Sylvan Carry added, Elspeth Sun's champion. These are all options. And you can see Matthew thinking about just playing this Wingmate Rock as a 3-4 flyer. Does not want to wait too, too long. He, yeah. He knows it's not the most efficient use, but he also does not want uh, Jerry to be under no pressure when he finally draws out of this. Yeah, so Matthew goes with a more a line to try to get full value. He's going to play Sylvan Carry out of this turn. I think the idea is he can play Elspeth and then get the Wingmate Rock with Raid. Yeah. But Jerry does hit his land finally, so Course of Crufix is now in play. See our second whip on top of Jerry's deck. It's not the land he might want, but you'll get another look at that. But once Jerry starts making his land drops, you know, Elspeth into Wingmate Rock may be a little bit slow. And you can see that's why Matthew was contemplating just casting the Wingmate Rock last turn. Yeah, He's I aware mean, he needs to get something on the board. As true as is often true with these hands that, are, that tend to be uh, really light on lands, once they finally draw their lands, they just are haymaker after haymaker. Although Matthew's hand's powerful enough that he will probably be able to hang. Here we go, it's Elspeth's son's champion for Matthew. It's what he was setting up for. She's gonna plus make three one-one soldiers. And second whip drawn from Jerry. We have our first result here. Glenn Jones does win 2-0 over Robert Hunsaker. That was his loss in the Swiss, but he has avenged it in short order. So Glenn with Abzan Reanimator is in your top four. Not surprising, he felt very confident with the deck and the matchup. See Jerry here, he will hit land four. There's a windswept heath on top of his deck. He's got to decide how he wants to combat this Elspeth. He can play a threat here, or he can glare of heresy the Elspeth. He'll start by playing windswept heath. Sees Hero's downfall on top, doesn't want any of that. He's going to crack his fetch land. He also has the option of gumming up the works a little bit here, I believe, with a Siege Rhino. He does. You're right, there's a Siege Rhino in his hand as well. Jerry has great cards, but a limited window in which to cast them, so he really has to make the most of each one here. Yep. And he also needs to try to navigate the game in such a way that he can start casting two spells in one turn. So even if the most obvious play is to glare the Elspeth right now, there is an argument for just spending four mana this turn so you can start to cast, let's say, that Farika and a Glare of Heresy next turn if you fly in land number five. And of course, Krufix is going to go ahead and swing in here. Perhaps that Elspeth one token will just jump in the way of it. And it'll just be Siege Rhino for Jerry. So a nice, nice life point swing here. Does open the window for Wingmate Rock. Possibly sure. even a minus three from Elspeth. There's no way for Jerry to stop the raid trigger from happening, though. That's just, that's just going to happen if Matthew has Wingmate Rock. This turn seems to be both tokens swing in. One gets blocked by Siege Rhino. The other one hits Jerry. He's down to 19. And you have it here. It will be Wingmate Rock. He's going to bring a 3-4 along with himself. Six power in the air. Elspeth is going to plus up again, making three more soldiers and an army being amassed on Matthew's side of the board. Now outnumbers Jerry in creatures 6-2. to two. But this is still, the game is still taking the kind of pace here where, it, it, you know, if Jerry can fend off lethal for a while, that something like Hornet Queen can get him right back into the game. 
we have seen that Hornet Queen and Whip out of the Abzan Reanimator deck ends up being the ultimate late game in these matchups. They can even take down a card like Elspeth, which is usually so good in these mid-range mirrors. Yep. Jerry with the draw for the turn, does find another land on top of his deck. He drew Farika for the turn. Looks like he'll get an Urborg off the top. Other update. The winner of this match is going to play the winner of the Brad Nelson Kelly King match, but that one's going to three. Kelly King with Mardu mid range, evening it up in his uphill battle against Brad's Jeskai tokens deck. Like I said, I, I think that Kelly does have some game post board. I think game one is a mess. But post board with Anger of the Gods and then hostilities, I think he has got legitimate game. Two copies of a race as well to fight Ascendancy. Yeah. You see here from Jerry's side, he does have the option of land and Doomwake Giant that will take care of the Elspeth tokens. But he's got to be real careful. If he makes that play, he opens up the window to Elspeth minus three, killing off his whole board. Although, if he goes and uses the Doomwake Giant here, then he also gets a pretty good attack with the Siege Rhino. Yeah, I do like what Jerry ended up doing here. He's going to play a second Corsair of Crufix, play the land off the top of his deck, make sure he gains two, and then we'll go ahead and Glare of Heresy the Elspeth. That makes it opens up the door for a safe Doomwake Giant on the following turn. Yes, though uh, he's going to be taking some damage in the air here for a little bit. Yeah, it seems like he's going to bank on Whip of Erebos to undo the damage he's going to take. That's going to allow him to take a lot of damage here, but... Even so, taking hits, you can only take so many hits from Wingmate Rock. That guy piles on damage really quickly. <laughs> yeah, most certainly. Other matchup, Ross Miriam, the first Jeskai Tokens deck. He's going to fall 2-0 to Sheldon Frierickson. So we're going to have Sheldon Frierickson versus Glenn Jones in our top four. Settle in for another long one, I suppose. Yeah, Sheldon is on the Abzan midrange deck today. Somewhat set up for the mirror. He was playing at least one copy of Dune Blast in his main. And I, I like the one copy of Dune Blast quite a bit. I, when people start moving to cards like Soul Theros and Soul Venistrad, I think you can go a little bit bigger, have one co main deck copy of Dune Blast instead, which is good in a bunch of spots that the souls are not. And Matthew will swing for six in the air. We talked about how many Wingmate Rocks you can hit. Well, Matthew's going to put it to the test. He plays a second copy of Wingmate Rock. There are now four birds in the air. Jerry's at 15. And now, now both the heavy, the heavy hits are coming from each side. We'll see which haymakers carry the day. And Jerry with the second copy of Urborg in his main deck, which you don't typically see. Uh, part of this is, you know, he needs early green mana and double black, and his mana base is demanding a lot of him, but that second copy hurting him quite a bit right now. As much as Jerry would like to do make giant the tokens, he may. We'll see whether he do makes or whips here. It's going to be do make giant. It's going to shrink Matthew's team. It'll kill all the tokens. Matthew's at 13. Jerry will have a really good swing here. He is looking at 12 damage on the swing back. And with Matthew getting quite a bit of life as well off his two wingmate mate Rosh Sugars. Yeah, so Siege Rhino will attack probably just because it's not blocking. Maybe he'll get a trade from Matthew. Probably not. Swings in for four. But Matthew, I'm, ha I'm happy just to race. I would not be blocking and trading here. I suppose it's not even a trade because the wingmate rocks are two threes. So, yep. yeah, he takes four, goes to 13. Or goes to nine, come from 13. And now we can see those wingmate rock triggers gain some life back for Matthew. But he's got to be careful because he knows Jerry has a whip of Erebos in his hand. And next turn when Jerry plays one, if Matthew doesn't have an answer to whip, he just... I'm not even sure that two wingmate rocks can race it. Well, it's it, Matthew right now has 12 damage on the table, and Jerry's attacking for 12. So the whip is an issue. But the alternate lines of play that Matthew has are not great here. Uh, playing an Elspeth, I, I suppose you can play Elspeth and minus it. That doesn't seem half bad. That gets a lot of Jerry's. The thing you have to do to combat whip if you can't kill the whip is you have to take the other person's power off the board and, and their creatures. Yep. Yeah, Jerry, no way to block this. We'll see what kind of follow-up Matthew wants to have here. And each wingmate rock gaining a lot of life there. 
each one gaining four. Matthew goes from nine up to 17. Jerry's now down to five. Seems like he's locked into playing Whip of Erebos here. He just seems to gain as much life as possible. Matthew's play for the turn was just a Sylvan carry added. See, Jerry, he has a Hornet Queen waiting on top of his deck. That's exactly what he wants here. Here's going to be Whip of Erebos and a swing. That's 12 power with lifelink. Matthew, however, was ready for that. As you see, his one copy of Erase out of the sideboard. That's in his hand. That may be good enough to send this to a game three. And Jerry knows it. He'll be scooping, and we are on to the decider. Pretty good mixture there of pressure and a little bit of disruption there for Matthew. And I think that's a good recipe for him in the matchup. Jerry, of course, stalled on lands for a while there. Couldn't quite get out of the gates efficiently, but... And even then, if Matthew doesn't have the Erase, he, I, you, like, you like Jerry in the, that game. It's still a game, at least. I think... Matthew had some really powerful tools in his hand, so I don't think that uh, Jerry for sure was back into it, but uh, the Whip of Erebos demonstrating how powerful it is. Even a game where Jerry was getting rocked like that, uh, if Whip of Erebos sticks, he still may be able to stay in it. Yeah, absolutely. And there's something, what do you think of Wingmate Rock in this matchup? One thing I realized from that game is that Jerry can't really kill them once they're in play. Granted, now he can play a card like Hornet Queen and just ignore Wingmate Rocks fairly well. He doesn't have much in the way of removal to handle it. He's got a couple spot removal spells, but those aren't the best against Wingmate Rock. He's got the Hornet Queen, as you mentioned, but he's sort of trying to address it sideways, you know, by overpowering Matthew or, uh, you know, by any of the game before, that kind of card really matters. Effectively, ending the game by just generating too much of an advantage or gaining so much life with Whip of Erebos that it doesn't really matter. But you are right. Jerry does not have a lot of ways to straight up handle the card. Players here getting ready for game three, going back to the sideboards. So you saw there that Erase there is a one of that came in out of Matthew's sideboard, but he does have two copies of Unravel the Aether as well to take care of a card like Whip. I like all the enchant removal that Matthew has access to. The Erase and the disenchant effects being really good against Corsair, Doomway Giant, Whip of Erebos. They are pretty, they're really efficient in the matchup and probably better than even something like Utter End would be because for the most part, Matthew's going to be wanting to target the enchantments that are in Jerry's deck. That game, Jerry just off to a bit of a slow start. He kept a two land Courser hand on the draw. He missed his third land on turn three and turn four. The Coursers didn't hit until turn five, and that just was too late for him as by that point, Matthew was making Elspeths and Wingmate Rocks. Underway game three, both players are quick keep on seven. They're gonna trade some Temple of Maladies to start. I don't even know how good Elspeth is in the matchup because of the Doomway Giants in Jerry's deck. It seems like that's going to come up a lot. Yeah, Elspeth, typically a great card in these Obzon mirrors, but you're right. Doomwake Giant takes care of it, and it still doesn't really win a late game against Whip or Hornet Queen. So it's, you're right. Well, um, Elspeth is not the trump you'd expect it to be. I think the Wingmate Rocks are much more powerful for Matthew in this matchup because Doomwake Giant doesn't handle it. Jerry can't really block the tokens. No, it's, it's Hornet Queen is, that's his answer. Yeah. You see both players early on just trading some land drops. Nobody with any plays right now. Jerry has land three, but still nothing. Matthew has kept a hand of multiple Siege Rhinos if he can get to enough mana to cast them. And I don't believe he hit his third land here. Or maybe he does. Caves of Koilos. So he does have his land. Obzon Charm is in his hand. How good... Now, normally in these Obzon Mirrors running Siege Rhinos, which is what we probably will see Matthew do, is a pretty powerful start. But in the reanimator, against the reanimator deck, how much do you like that, that kind of draw? It's still fine, but it is something that, that Jerry can fend off fairly easily. With some removal spells, his own Siege Rhinos. I'm going to trade some Obzon Charms here. Jerry draws two on Matthew's end step. Jerry with the second Urborg again. Ugh. I mean, he can he can still use it to load his pedal, as it were. <laughs> yeah, it's not really... You're right. It is a certainly something that has come to get him both games. Now, I think that people don't play the second Urborg enough. Too many people default to one index where I think the second one is, is fine, but sometimes you do draw the second one. That is the cost. Yeah, and control, you know, especially decks where you need to Bio Blight or something. The card can be very powerful. 
We see it's going to be an obs on charm from Matthew as well. Jerry's playing a land and passing. Looks like another Siege Rhino in Matthew's hand. So he's just going to lay Siege here. He's got a nice curve here. We make rocks and Siege Rhinos. We'll start with the Siege Rhino. We have an update from the other side of the bracket. So far, our top four has Glenn Jones and Sheldon Frierickson in it. Brad Nelson will be joining them with Just Guy Tokens. He defeated Kelly King two games to one. Brad's going to face the winner of this match. Very good run for Kelly. Uh, we did not expect uh, Mardu to be very good based on the field that we've seen, but able to bang out a top eight. Very nicely done. Jerry here, turn four, does not have a land. He was went fishing for one. He could have sieged Rhino, but instead plays Corsair of Crufix. Did Murderous cut the siege Rhino on Matthew's turn, so Matthew's board's still clear. Wants to keep Matthew off of having an eligible attacker for as long as he can to try to mitigate the damage done by Wingmate Rock. Doesn't want that guy to go raiding at all. And receiver Matthew, land five, has the option couple options here. He's just going to pass the turn, it looks like. Does not make Wingmate Rock or Siege Rhino. He's going to hold up some removal spells. Jerry draws for the turn, still missing his land drop. He's going to swing with Corsair of Crufix. But he is tight on mana right now. But a murderous cut on top of his deck is, is a nice insurance policy against Matthew's next draw step. And it's going to be Siege Rhino on Jerry's side. Perhaps we'll just be playing a fair game here. You can see Matthew did a little look and a little bit of a pause there when Jerry was in his draw step. Usually that indicates someone who's considering killing a Corsair based on whether or not the top card of the deck is land. And because Matthew had Hero's Downfall, you can tell that was the case. Yeah. Ends up here using Hero's Downfall on the Rhino. And we're back over to his side. Life totals both still high, 17 and 16. Now Matthew will get his own Courser ready for the Courser Wars here. Utter End is the top card. Matthew has the advantage over that he has more lands right now, both in hand and in play. Yeah, Jerry has, has missed a little bit in the second Urborg. Very punishing. I see here. Wind swept teeth for Matthew, and he passes. So we're back onto Jerry. Still no lands from Thoughtseize on top of the deck. These cards like Murderous Cut and Thoughtseize aren't really bad on this board, but it's, you know, I'm sure Jerry would like to be drawing lands at the same time. Absolutely. I think the removal spells are just great in this matchup. Past that, you know, these discard spells, not so much. Jerry will play a second Courser. Then he'll make his Urborg. So to get rid of the first one. And it will be Murderous Cut for Courser of Crufix. Using the Legend Rule to facilitate Delve. Very nicely done. Plays the Courser first to get the extra life point. <laughs> a bunch of, this game's in the margins. And he keeps the aggro on here. And it's interesting, so what Jerry's doing, he's, he's buying time here for his land drops by using cards like Corsair of Crufix and Murderous Cut very aggressively. And as long as Matthew can never get to an attacker, uh, you know, his hand's not that good. He really needs that Wingmate Rock Raid Trigger to have much of anything going. And he's got to be worried, too, because Jerry's got a full hand of cards. He's missed land drops again. Really seems like Jerry's aware of this Wingmate Rock threat, so he's doing... He's very aggressively stopping any attacker on Matthew's side. Yeah. Matthew has a Siege Rhino in hand, but he's going to opt against it. He's looks like he's going to go for his Utter End instead. And I would have preferred, I think, to play a... Uh, unless Matthew has two removal spells here, I would have preferred to play the creature. We'll see in a moment. But this breaking up the Courser inside the draw step doesn't work if Jerry gets to keep one of the coursers. And we see here it's a 
the, that thought sees from Jerry. Hero's downfall on top of his deck. I know you said you really liked removal in Jerry's situation. I gave you the choice between a removal spell on top and a land on top, though. Which one are you taking? Depends kind of what's going on with the, with the mixture of his hand here. I think that I would prefer to just have the removal spells. The land drops are going to come regardless. He basically gets two looks out of him a turn. You could have the best of both worlds. You could get that land off the top and then have a hero's downfall under and, it. And Matthew's not pressuring him. That's another important thing, too. Uh, yes, Jerry's missing land drops, but it's not like Matthew's capitalizing on it very much right I mean, now. Matthew's the one at six here, right? Jerry makes Siege Rhino. Uh, yeah, Jerry's Jerry's saying you better get Doom Blast pronto or the game's over. Yeah, and that's really interesting for Matthew. He didn't play the Siege Rhino and then didn't play any spells on Jerry's turn. Yeah. I mean, that seemed like a pretty good uh, opportunity to downfall something. Then he gets to untap play his own Siege Rhino. Yes, it gets downfall, but at least it's Jerry's mana and, and Hero's downfall to respond to. He's going to go to four. He's going to Thought Seize Jerry. We see on Thompson's side, Murderous Cut, a Courser of Crufix, Whip of Erebos. And based on what we know about Matthew's hand, he almost has to take Murderous Cut. Yeah, I mean, this is hard, right? Because even if he kills the Siege Rhino, Jerry could whip it, so he's going to take the whip of Erebos, knowing I don't think he feels like he can beat that right now. Well, I, I think he may be dead on board if he casts the Siege Rhino. Because Jerry has Murderous Cut in hand. Matthew's only going to seven. He has no way to interact with the board. You're absolutely right. That's why I, I understand whip of Erebos is really bad, but I think Matthew is just dead if Jerry just go, gets to go into next turn with a Murderous Cut. At least if you take the Murderous Cut, you have the hope of drawing a an answer to whip next turn. And Matthew knows it too. So that will be the extension. And Jerry Thompson, your undefeated player and one seed, moving on to the semifinals in a clash of the Titans here with Brad Nelson. This is going to be a real good one. And it, it's nice to have Jerry back at these tournaments. Uh, you know, he's still on his uh, semi-sabbatical after doing R&D work. There's a time after each set gets released that you've worked on that you're not allowed to play in sanctioned events. So Jerry is going to have this kind of part-time schedule for the next couple of months. But he's right now in a spot where he can play in tournaments. He's going to be playing in the Invitational and obviously off to a great start here in Portland. I mean, Jerry Thompson is one of the players, I think, with the most consistent success on the SCG circuit over the years. If you look 